Besides tule elk and pronged horn antelope, black-tailed deer, a subspecies of the mule deer, lives in the coast range. For the patween, it was another important food mammal, which they hunted with bow and arrow. Into the valley of the Patween, the Berryessa family moved in 1842. They had come with wagons and cattle after being outfitted and supplied by General Vallejo himself, a service he rendered to many Mexican settlers in the area who lived east of San Francisco. The Berryessa brothers, Sisto and Jose de Jesus, arrived in the valley, which they claimed and subsequently named El Rancho de las Putas, which in the Putas part of the epitaph was perhaps a misrendering in Spanish of a local Indian name for suckerfish, a native species inhabiting the stream that flowed through the ranch. Like all potential owners of a Mexican land grant, the Berriesa brothers had to draw a decenio, or freehand map of the property claimed by them, and they had to accompany it with a supplication to the Mexican authorities in Sonoma. Then there was a request to the governor in Monterey a year later, on the 20th of October, 1843, asking for eight sites of land. A site, or square league, is approximately 4,438 acres. Thus, they were requesting over 35,500 acres. Because of the rapidity of the exchange of subsequent correspondence, it seems likely that the Berriessa brothers or their representative were actually in Monterey. It appears they would be granted only four sites of land because 10 days later, a second request was written, stating that. Our family having grown a great deal, including all our fathers, brothers, and our children, counting also a little more than a hundred non-Christian Indians who are around us, we wish all to live in the same site that we are requesting, and in four sites, which what Your Excellency has gradually deemed to grant to us. We cannot fit, thus we need land for our livestock, our flocks, land for the tillage, and then in addition for the subsistence of our whole family, it is necessary to maintain the Indians to avoid, to some measure, the thefts that they will be able to carry out. For all that has been posited, we request from Your Excellency that you deem to grant to us the other four sides of our major livestock, hoping that Your Excellency will cooperate in our well-being. The response to the two supplications were made on the 3rd of November, 1843. The brothers were granted the acreage they wanted with various stipulations that they had to fulfill in order to own the land. Among the stipulations were a house had to be built on the land within one year, domesticated trees had to be planted within and around the periphery of the property to mark its border. As an aside, this would have been very difficult due to the lack of rainfall for nearly seven to nine months a year and the property could never be subdivided or sold. Over the years, several adobes were built and enclosed with wooden exteriors. The first two constructed were for each of the two brothers, one adobe on either side of the Puta Creek, then called El Rio de las Putas. Cattle and other domestic stock were built up in numbers and moved around the ranch as well as being driven over the mountains to the ranch of their other three brothers, Francisco, Mesillo and Santiago. The oaks, now in their muted fall colors, the blue oak, black oak, interior live oak, losing some but not all of its leaves, the valley oak, and the oracle oak. These were all part of the passing scenery as the Berriessas made their autumnal cattle drives. The oak's acorns were no longer gathered to be consumed by humans, but were now fed to the cattle and pigs. The Patuines' traditional subsistence food had been turned into supplementary animal feed in the blink of an eye. The native bunch grasses were severely grazed down by the new cattle-owning settlers, with a lasting result, one that impacts us today, the establishment of large numbers of new, non-native annual grasses and thistles that opportunistically took root once the native perennials had been diminished or eliminated. In addition, other non-native plants were slipping into California by way of sheep's wool, in packing for dishware, in earth ballast from ships, 
and by the Spanish missionaries, homesick for their old world plants, who requested innumerable bags of oats and brome seed. These bags arrived with the requested seeds, but they also contained many other seeds that would later cause tremendous and costly management problems for the state of California. The Berryessa's vast cattle ranch also had its ever-changing grazed land. What did not change were the trees and shrubs of the area, for introduction of foreign larger species had not occurred. The beautiful red bud is a forest legume that adds nitrogen to the soil for all plants to use. The buckeye, still estivating, now has developed large seeds ready to fall when the first winter rains arrive. These seeds, like the acorns, are no longer gathered for food. The beautiful red-barked manzanita stands out as part of the autumn colors. The toyon or Christmas berry by late fall has developed large fruits, many of which become bright red and are gradually eaten by birds over the course of the winter. The leaves turn red after falling on the ground. The Berryessas did not use the toyon berries to make a beverage, as the Patuin Indians had done before them. Soap plant dies back completely in the fall. It, too, is no longer utilized by human. The iris remains somewhat green during the autumn months, while sticky monkey flowers have become brown in readiness for winter.